Hello, I'm Frank Lamb, and this is a Mastering the Machine webinar for May 14th, 2021. Our guest today was Tatsoft and the Tatsoft team. Tatsoft makes SCADA software. Hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of get started. Uh, I just have a couple little uh, introductions that I, I do here beforehand to kind of explain what this is. Some of the people who join um, aren't familiar with either me or what I'm what I'm doing here. So the Automation Academy is a, a it's like a training site that I have. I do a lot of live training, but I also have a, a website with a lot of uh, uh, people that join and uh, I serve up videos and and downloads and things like that. It's it's what's known as a membership site. And this presentation is basically because uh, I, I belong to a group called the Membership Academy where they say, you know, you should have live events. So early on when I started this in November, I said, okay, I'll do a live event every two weeks. And now this, this live event, I've had a guest on almost every one of them. And this week, uh, my guest is Tatsoft. So um, where did this all come from? Uh, I created a 26 page document called Mastering the Machine. It's about machine building and uh, how people specify machines, things like that. Uh, I do a lot of PLC training, things like that, but this didn't concern that. It concerned how people specify machines um, and people download it. And it's what's known as an opt-in incentive. So sometimes I collect emails, things like that. Some of the people that joined this group, uh, they said, you know, we, we're not really here for your PLC programming classes. We wanna learn systems integration. So I quickly changed my path and uh, started this Mastering the Machine course, which is more about systems integration and machine building. Uh, and that's where all this came from, right? So that's where I got started. And then um, I've had, I think, two of these every month since I started, two kind of events like this. Uh, we've had Dave Griffith on here, lots of different people uh, from factories and from uh, PLC trainers, things like that. And this week, uh, we are having Tatsoft. So Tatsoft is uh, was founded by Marcos Tacolini, who's our guest here. He's the chief technical officer, and also uh, Harry uh, McCollum is on here as uh, he's the I guess the CEO of the company. So uh, president president of the company president yep. of the company. So yes. Never, never know about titles. I, I list. Like yeah, they're yeah, mix and match. Because there. I don't have any employees, so <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I just, I just call myself a founder. I used to have uh, about fifteen employees and run a machine building company. That's kind of my background. And Harry and I have talked. To, uh, we, I was down at a plant in Miami, and we, we talked to the owner of the plant about possibly using Tatsoft. And I think he's still, he's still planning on doing that. But he's, uh, he's about to embark on a three-month RV trip. And I'm going to go oh. down there and run his the technical side of his business while he's gone for quite a bit of the time. But at this point, I, I think I will turn it over uh, to you guys. So I'm going to stop my screen share and let you guys start your presentation. Um, I think there are lots of people on here. I see Vlad, John Sullivan, lots of folks. And uh, make sure I can share. I see Giovanni, lots of people I know. So let's see. Uh, all participants. No, well. I guess that's my own uh, only option. So you should be able to take over now. Okay, and um, do you guys see me? See my screen? Yep, I sure do. Okay. And maybe we'll just kick off with uh, giving a little bit of a um, backgrounder here of us, the, the guys on the phone from Tatsoft. Um, so I'm, Harry McCullum, as Frank uh, mentioned, I am the uh, president of Tadsoft, and I've been Mark's Mark's the founder, and he'll do a little bit of an intro. But Mark and I met a few years ago, and uh, a couple years ago, uh, he brought me on as uh, president to help you know kind of drive overall uh, growth in the company. Um, we had been mainly, uh, and you, you'll see a little bit of the platform's great platform, uh, but we'd mainly been selling to OEMs and um, we do have a handful of kind of marquee customers, but now what we're trying to do is really uh, 
polish the platform up a little bit and really get it more out into the mainstream industrial automation software markets. Uh, so my background is I have been, I'm an old guy, I've been in the industry for 30 plus years. Um, I worked with the Inolution company as a, uh, actually as one of their first um, manufacturers reps back in early 90s. And I got to know the founder of that company quite well and was with that company as it grew from 12 people or so to, you know, a uh, fairly big company that eventually got acquired by um, GE. So my background is sales, marketing, uh, systems integration, technical, uh, somewhat of a technical background, engineering, computer science uh, degrees, uh, but definitely more on the, uh, the business side and the business growth side. Uh, let Mark uh, say a few things about uh, his background. Uh, well, I started in, uh, about three decades ago was when doing the transition from uh, PDP computers, VMS to PC. <laughs> Believe it or not, that was the very first automations using PC and PLCs. <laughs> they were just starting by that time. <laughs> So I started working in creating software, HMI software, factory for uh, software, initially as a system company doing custom built solutions. But very soon I started, uh, first company was Unisoft in DOS. <laughs> then we had the Indusoft company that eventually was sold to Schneider. And one thing I'm very proud to say that uh, pro, uh, is when we sold that was to, was to create a new technology because I saw what we had was still not really designed for the new environment. So I feel, but I'm very proud to say that was a good thing also because even right now, there is a product called Aviva at HMI that's pretty much my same previous products <laughs> with some new little packings or things around, but you won't go to the kernel of the thing. It's the same thing that was uh, created previously. Uh, but even it's great thing, we decide to be, to create something more specifically designed to industry 4.0, to IoT, and you explore a little bit in this section why and what we have in addition now that we could not do 10 years ago. That's it. <laughs> uh, Tolgar, you want to do a quick intro? Sure. Uh, name is Tolgar Alphabet, VP of Marketing here at Tadsoft. Joined the team in March of 2020. Uh, getting ready to rebrand and launch, and then we all know what happened on the timeline there. So, um, been in marketing for a little over 15 years, uh, got into manufacturing industrial about six years ago, and then also worked in um, supply chain. And uh, really excited about this product. It's, it's just an exciting uh it's an exciting journey right now for everything manufacturing and industrial. And it's just, it's, it's exciting to be a part of this company because there's just so much growth potential. So just uh, thanks again for having us on, Frank. Appreciate it. Okay. So yeah, what I'm going to do is just step through a couple slides and then Mark's going to hop in and uh, show some of the, the platform and, and then we can go to Q and a or whatever after that. So pretty open. If anyone has any questions, obviously along the way, uh, feel free. So uh, as we said, frameworks, frameworks is kind of our, the name of our platform. So a lot of people know us as uh, factory studio. Factory studio is also uh, the name of our uh, kind of original product, our original product name. And I'll explain some of the differences as we go here. Uh, Mark talked a little bit about his background, but the company has a uh, deep and rich experience in the industrial automation software space. Um, we have the group of developers that was with Mark 
the core group of developers that was with Mark when he originally started um, is still our our core group. Plus, obviously, we've added added to that group. Um, we have somewhat of an international presence. I said we were just working with OEMs, but we do have a um, international presence, and I'll I'll also talk about some of the uh, some of the end users that we're dealing with. Um, the technology is a .NET based um, software uh, that is very robust and and can really answer a myriad of real time applications uh, from you know kind of IIoT edge type applications to um, simple HMI. So it can it can really start at the uh, simple, easy to configure type of HMI to advanced SCADA type applications and then into uh, enabling much more robust applications around um, advanced device connectivity and um, analytics. Uh, we use it, uh, it, it's been used quite a bit as a, a front end for, front end and logic engine for manufacturing execution and man manufacturing intelligence systems. A variety of different industries um, and we go to market through, like, as I said, OEMs, uh, systems integrators, and then, you know, we also have uh, direct relationships with some of the end users that have uh, the kind of the bigger engineering groups. Um, but anything from, you know, chemical, uh, we have a pretty heavy footprint in um, energy and renewables. Um, another uh, couple very good customers or a few very good customers in the oil and gas space. Um, Apache and Hess and um, some of the smaller uh, pipeline companies, as well as uh, quite a bit on the drilling side of oil and gas used in water wastewater, you know, kind of where the traditional SCADA applications are. Uh, life sciences, we have um, multiple applications that have gone through the um, FDA validations with uh, supporting like 21 CFR part 11 and things like that. So variety of different industries. So the product family is, as I mentioned, we, we call the whole platform frameworks. And it really is a single development environment that enables these uh, we'll just say four products, but there's other other product concepts that we're coming up with, but it is one single development environment. And really the, you know, starting with frameworks, we also call the unlimited version of the platform frameworks. So that's unlimited kind of unlimited clients, unlimited IO points, unlimited connections, unlimited developers. So it kind of starts at that higher level, um, enterprise type applications or bigger applications. And then Factory Studio was kind of our traditional, you know, the name that that Mark uh, had uh, picked for the, uh, the software uh, when we first came out. And it is still, we call our uh, main, you know, SCADA and industrial automation um, product Factory Studio. And it is, you buy it, kind of scaled by IO points and uh, clients. So you can go to the unlimited, that's kind of the big Mac daddy, or you can scale this thing down to, um, you know, 500 IO points or lower uh, for your smaller type applications. And it also obviously scales on the, uh, from a pricing standpoint. And then the edge HMI was really to go after certain markets um, around, you know, like maybe some of the single station HMIs that are out there, some of the, the panel type products to, to offer a uh, PC based, you know, kind of panel product um, that again is one single development environment and can uh, very simply integrate to the enterprise. And then edge gateway is, 
is a newer space that we've been playing in. And it, it really takes advantage of uh, it, actually no uh, headless, no, no HMI. Um, but then, you know, that allows us to get to a, a better price point for these edge devices, as well as um, if you need to just do some edge computing, all of the, um, our logic engine and everything is still still at that at that level. So, anything else you'd want to add to that, Mark, on the product oh, family? It's perfect. Okay, so this, I just wanted to give you a feel for you know kind of what's included in the in the platform and some of the kind of features and how we break out the the four different product areas that I talked about, but. As you can see, just on the on our highest end, a redundant uh, unlimited server is in that seventeen two fifty type of price, and we also offer that in subscription. What we're seeing more and more, and I'd be, I'd be interested to see what other uh, uh, even the systems integration community sees, is we're seeing more and more IT influence in a lot of these industrial applications. And they're wanting they're wanting to buy more on a subscription basis, and um, we offer that. It's mainly on the high end, uh, but again, we're seeing seeing more and more of that, especially in kind of these manufacturing intelligence type solutions. Um, yeah, so that's that's uh, and that factory studio, as I said, it's it you know I O. You know, from 500 I/O points um, up to, I believe, 15,000 is our highest, and then you just hop into the unlimited edge. That's where we start to limit some of the functionality, um, so it's a little more equivalent uh, from a from a functional standpoint. It's a little more uh, equivalent to the panel type products out there, and again, the price point then then reflects that, so that we can play in that in that marketplace also. Um, and then the edge, as I mentioned on the edge, it's a um, uh, headless, no no graphics. So, so what's in the box? This has been quite a bit of, uh, on our LinkedIn lives that Tolgar and Mark have been doing. This is, they're, they're kind of focusing in on different features and, and all that content is available if you you kind of want to dig in and learn a little bit more i'm just going to kind of give a a quick overview here and you know one of the things um that we kind of um uh, you know promote and that's inherent in our platform and it is very complete meaning um you get a lot of tools um you know in the package there's not a lot of optional you need a little bit of this and you need a little bit of that to tag on. It's really, we're trying to be a complete and open, flexible uh, platform. So, and again, we're kind of enabling not just SCADA HMI. Um, you know, we really, and, and some of the applications Mark's going to show are, are some non-traditional applications from a SCADA product standpoint. So we're, we're kind of, more than a SCADA product. So um, some of the core functionalities that's included is, um, you know, OPC UA, you know, that's, that's pretty standard these days. We're an OPC, OPC UA client and um, server. We also support um, uh, most of the other OPC technologies. Drivers is a big thing as we include 50 plus protocols with the platform. Um, we have a driver toolkit. Um, our group comes out of developing hundreds of drivers. So we never let we never let a driver be an issue. Um, we work with all this is kind of one of our strengths around OEMs is if they have some kind of specific um, needs to interface with some kind of custom control or even just additional functionality in, um, you know, a standard driver. That's that's something our group kind of specializes in um, working with OEMs, integrators, end users to 
to develop custom drivers or just new device type drivers. Um, SQL, the platform's really based around SQL. We, we save all our configuration in a, um, in a secure, secure SQL database. And then also we have great connectivity to SQL inherent, you know, you know, just simple configuration to, to talk to multiple SQL databases, Microsoft SQL, you know, Oracle, and really no limitations there on our connectivity. Um, built in a uh, graphics package, a draw package, where you create your displays and that's, and I think Mark will show a little bit, but you know, one graphics development environment where you can create, you know, kind of rich um, WPF oriented displays or HTML5 type displays, or, you know, we have this concept of dashboarding that uh, maybe we'll show off a little bit. So you can simply put together a, you know, kind of a panel based dashboard and then um, alarming engine. I won't go through all of these, but uh, you can see see the other items up there. Uh, one of the unique things is if you do need and when you need to turn to code, um, we have uh, we support C sharp and BB.NET kind of interchangeably. And maybe Mark will show a little bit of that. But if you write your code in C sharp, um, you can kind of flip the switch and get the VB.NET version of that. And then we also support uh, Python uh, for our code behind, as well as if you're creating HTML5 pages, uh, we support uh, JavaScript as the code behind. So. Operating systems, we, um, our development is in Windows, uh, but you can target uh, Linux uh, for the, um, for runtime. And uh, actually we're, we're heading more towards that direction. We're getting a lot of input around uh, Linux, but um, right now we, we fully support Linux as a runtime target. Drivers. Just thought I'd give you an idea of some of the ones that are included with the platform. I uh, won't go into any specifics there. This is kind of our, our, our big theme is really to integrate to any system. So we provide a lot of different open interfaces to, you know, variety of different systems at, you know, I talked about the drivers, but also uh, historians, process historians. We have high speed connections to both log data and read data uh, from variety of process historians. Uh, we have, um, we support, you know, kind of web interfaces for, and, and have specific interfaces to different cloud-based databases, that type of thing. So we're really trying to fit into your, to any, landscape out there you know uh, certainly we can kind of do a bunch of different functionality but what we see most is our you know our customers our systems integrators have customers where they, they want to pick off you know a certain set of applications to enhance their existing landscape so so we're kind of built to fit where you need us there so um it's about that. Uh, we're constantly working on improving and coming up with new functionality in the platform. The platform is extremely feature rich. Um, and we just had uh, earlier, a few months ago, we released, uh, we did our 9 1 release. Um, some of the, I'll just go talk maybe some of the highlights here. The. Uh, MQTT, uh, we did have, uh, yeah, we did have MQTT uh, support before this, but now we're, uh, we support uh, MQTT as a broker or a client and or a client, as well as we now support uh, Sparkplug B. Um, this is a, uh, 
you know, we're, we're getting a lot of interest in this and um, we're also uh, looking at some partnership with some other um, MQTT brokers. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. I mentioned the Python integration. Uh, let's see, we have a new, uh, the visual SQL query builder just makes it um, easier to, to build queries for, for your SQL applications. And let's see, any other specific ones you want to highlight, Mark? Yeah, well, you did mention the Linux improvements. That's nice. Enhancements on the symbol library, not in the terms of quantity and also what you can, how you can connect the symbols. That's what's interesting. But the key message is that it's evolving. You are all yeah. times edging. <laughs> Constantly evolving. And, you know, we've got a lot of good information out there on this 9.1 release. If you want to dig into it further, also, you know, at any time, feel free to reach out to to us, and we we'll be glad to you know kind of um, dig into some more of these things. And I put a what's next because yes, we keep <laughs> we keep improving and keep enhancing, and a lot of this is based on our feedback from our uh, customers and you know, definitely from our systems integration community, that is as one of our key conduits for input as to, you know, making the platform easier to use and as well as putting in, um, you know, more feature functionality uh, based on market need, you know. So uh, the one of our big themes, you know, and I talked about our connectivity, but really this, um, one of the things we're working on that will be released uh, probably within the next quarter or so is this sense of external tag provider where um, initially we're going to do kind of auto discover of tags and asset models um, for uh, MQTT, um, OPC UA, and um, we're working on this with historians because there's a lot of um, modeling that's done in the historian tags. So the ability to just really um, work with and auto, auto discover those tags and asset models. And specifically historian wise, we're working a lot with uh, Canary these days, but we've done a ton of work with OSI soft as well as um, GE and uh, Wonderware's historian and Rockwell's historian, so which I believe is OSI Softs. Uh, constantly working on uh, OPC UA, we see that as a key technology um, in terms of their, you know, making we this I think enhancement is around supporting uh, some some of their security. Um, and that is a was a specific request from one of our um, OEM customers. This Rockwell driver is a is a um, interesting um, thing that we're working on, and that is the today we can use the and I may screw this up, Mark LNK L five K file, yeah, yeah, that guy. We use that guy, we import it, and then you know, then we uh, can auto create the tags. But uh, our next version is we're going to be able to auto discover uh, the PLC tags and data structures. So that is something that's pretty exciting. Um, more HTML5, we see that as a big need. Uh, our users are definitely pushing us that way. We, you know, we already support HTML5, but just more symbols, more widgets in that direction. Um, continuing to improve docs and training. That's kind of one of my personal projects here for this quarter is really to get more online uh, training. Again, the, the platform is very feature rich. So we are in enhancing and working as we speak on online training and just, you know, just documenting all these features better, making it easier to use more examples, that kind of thing. And then 
partnerships, two key partnerships that um, we already work with these guys, but we're announcing kind of a further relationship with them in terms of uh, product offerings. So next, I'd say within the, uh, let me give us a quarter again. Um, we're going to announce commercial relationships with Canary and Hive MQ, where we're going to uh, have used the Canary Historian engine as an option within our platform. So um, that should be a, uh, a, a good way for people to, um, if you need that kind of more uh, robustness of a process, world-class process historian, uh, you'll be able to do that as a checkbox right within our platform and actually buy that entire solution from us. Um, as well as HiveMQ, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with these guys. They're kind of coming on the scene pretty strong here. It's a company out of Germany, and they provide a enterprise class uh, MQTT broker technology. And we're also going to have a commercial relationship with those guys where you can use our own internal broker or um, anybody's broker, but you'll also have an option to kind of get into their um, enterprise broker right uh, right from us. So uh, look for that, uh, those announcements and more details here in the, in the not too distant future. And that was all I'm gonna do to you guys today in terms of PowerPointing and, uh, and my commercial messages there. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mark and unless anyone has any specific questions, I'll turn it over to Mark and let him uh, show some of the software. Uh, any questions so far, Frank? Uh, not for me. Uh, it sounds like you have most of the features. We did have a question um, online. I think Vlad asked about the auto discovering, and it sounds like you're working on that for Alan Bradley. But right now, you yes. still ha still have to import the L5K file. Right now, yes, but it, it will be very short term. We are already coding our final tests tests for that. Okay. It will be pretty much with what we are L5K, but getting directly from the controller. Have you tried uh, browsing for Siemens uh, TI portal tags? Uh, we have that on the requests, uh, okay. but it's not something that we are already scheduled to deploy. The first one will be Rocco, uh, but every, almost every time we mention that we're doing that for Rocco, they remind us to go to Kia Portal. <laughs> Yeah, I think the optimized uh, data blocks uh, cause problems yeah. for some people because the exactly. the big bit addresses are kind of mixed up. So yeah, we do have right, some nice issues with them because nowadays they support lots of OPC UA connectivity. So through OPC UA, we will have right away some auto discovery. But we are aware there have some custom specific APIs. Okay, thanks. And one thing I'm going to show uh, in a little bit is we cannot only do auto discovery, but not even have to create the tags. So it's a completely new concept that I will explain a little bit. <laughs> let's go for that. So uh, let's uh, share my uh, screen. Uh, here we go. And let's talk a little bit about that concept of uh, auto discovery, what that means. Uh, one thing that we're starting to have more and more requests, and this application is using our, our web interface, by the way, are applications where uh, you have uh, some assets you need to monitor. And you want to do the application to be more self-aware, to react based on the asset model. So if I switch the view uh, to a dashboard style, you see when I go to Tripoli that I have five solar panels there, the display will automatically show five. If I go to Barcelona where I have only two assets, uh, the display will also 
uh, the same screen, the same engineering will adapt to show two. And, or if I go to the tail for that one, and with what the auto discovery combined with that kind of uh, application allows, uh, when you add more cities or when you add more assets here, there is zero configuration of the engineering <laughs> because not only we have the auto discovery to find the tags, uh, but the application will be able to be self-aware and react based on the data model. So the application is driven by the auto discovery through that assets. That's the final concept that where you fully leverage that uh, ability to uh, have the full benefits uh, for that auto discovery uh, solution, okay. And uh, one concept that we are doing that's very new, uh, we had some tools like uh, the importer for L5K file or uh, some other auto discovery tools that shows the data. So you can create a tag or a variable in your system uh, mapping uh, to that external data source. Uh, but uh, what we are doing now on the next release is even going beyond that. So uh, if you have an OPC uh, UA or a Rocco or Canary Labs, we cannot only auto discover and browse the data models directly, but in our application, you don't need to create local tags because typically how it was on the past, uh, that's by the way, our products. So here's where you do your project configuration and just a basic overview on the interface. We try to do uh, the configuration as simple as possible. So you do the configuration like you were uh, doing uh, just like a, a web browser. And in fact, let me switch to this other window that I have uh, the full environment before I go on the details. So this is our main platform. So each one of those icons, as you see, is an automation solution. And we allow those automation solutions to manage different product releases and different servers. So you can do remote engineering, you can do distributed engineering with those projects. So if I switch from my table view here, uh, you see they're using uh, different protocols. We have some built-in version management of the projects and you are also able to mix different releases so that's great for large end users and integrators. Uh, they can manage um, a very uh, distinct set of projects. And another example of application running before you go to the engineering, uh, as Harry pointed out, we have different kinds of projects. So we do have some applications that are more like traditional uh, uh, scale our process control pages, and we also support new standards like high perform graphics. If you want to follow those uh, new standards on uh, SCADA, of course, a very complete alarm and trend engine. Uh, some other applications uh, are more the traditional OEE or and on. So I'm uh, just quick. Uh, view on those. So we, we, by the way, we have very nice out of the box features to deploy uh, OE solutions. And what Harry was describing a little bit ago that we can do displays that are more like that one, that's typical uh, process like display. So when you resize, you resize that proportionally. Uh, as well, we can do very easy dashboard styles. So instead of have a cross diagram, uh, you you do have a dashboard that you can, when you resize, it will change 
the position of the objects to fit your form factor. That's one uh, example. Uh, when after you download the demo to see by yourself, you have that free download, you can explore that and on project by yourself. Some other projects uh, that are doing a lot now is on asset monitoring. Uh, in that case, the ability to connect very easy uh, with uh, those things, it's with external mods importance. And a, a little bit about the graphics. Here, it's not an image file. It's really, uh, we are showing directly the 3G model. Uh, so we have also very high performance, high speed graphics. And in fact, when uh, performance is a requirement, uh, both on the scripting data as well the graphics, I'm going to talk uh, in a little bit, we are uh, very likely uh, to be one of the best solutions, if not the best when performs is a requirement. And before I go, how you create all those things very briefly, any questions so far? Or any comments from our team or someone else? Okay, I take that as a no, not that as a loss of audio connection. <laughs> so, and, uh, when you do uh, new projects, I, I will briefly show here uh, what is the environment. So when you drill down to one specific project, we have that UI that you did try to do a more up-to-date interface. Most of the engineering tools in the past, you have that file open, big complex trees, lots of dialogues. Uh, in our case, uh, we did try to do really something more simple. So essentially, uh, the configuration are pretty much simple table. So you are uh, def you define your data model, and the interface is quite simple. But what we have behind is very advanced, because the data model can be arrays of three dimensions. Uh, we have the concept of distributed database with several clients' domains. Uh, we have the ability to create a very advanced user data types and matching all advanced features like Oracle and Bekoff they have, where you can have one data type inside another data type. Uh, so I will not do a full demonstration of everything, but because these data types are very important concepts, I'll do just a simple demonstration of that one. So if I have an application that I want to work with my uh, PIGs, I can create uh, the uh, PIG representation of as I use on my company. And these uh, PIG objects, uh, I can now create my variable loop that instead of type integer is of type PIG and create 1000 of that in my data model. So this single configuration line, if I go to the information about the project, I see I'm handling more than 5000 points uh, with that very simple configuration. And I'm not go on the detail now, but many things we do uh, allows to multiplex data on analytics, on screens. So even large applications, you can have not that much configuration to accomplish. So the overview of what Harry said that you have on the blocks, now you see on the real thing, we do have a built-in SQL story for large scale enterprise applications, we have those new partnerships with Canary, but we do have a built-in uh, SQL. Uh, we have very robust security, FDA compliance. All the communication drivers, we support OPC, but we have a broadcast on YouTube where I explain why OPC is not enough. So we support uh, dozens and dozens of directly connections 
to all kinds of na native connectivity, and that's very important. Uh, advanced alarm engine, lots of functionality around SQL databases, and uh, the scripting. Uh, we call it scripts because it's a common term everyone uses, but in fact, what we do have on scripts is a full programming language. You, you can do in our scripts uh, pretty much anything that you would like to do in some other system. So if you want to write some code in reaction to those events, uh, our built-in code editor uh, has all uh, the functionality that we will have uh, in a full uh, .NET environment uh, with uh, the benefits to be able to access not only all the .NET API as I'm doing here, uh, as well uh, very easily accessing all your data model. So if I want to go to my uh, loop tag, I can pick up here one of my loops and I have right away the access uh, through the data model that I just created. And not only that, the same for alarms, everything in the object is exposed as an object to the system. And as Hajit mentioned, you can do VB.NET as well. So this code in C Sharp now, if one click, I have the same code in VB. Uh, if someone else on my company is more familiar with that. And finally, on the UI, the reporting tool that we can create uh, data for HTML5 or PDF access, and a very powerful drawing tool. Uh, we have the concept that even you are creating HTML5 pages, we have this drawing tool uh, that whatever creating HTML5 pages or Windows smart client pages, that's the same configuration. And uh, we think that's uh, same configuration. We have uh, all kinds of symbols. We have a very extensive symbol library that you can extend. And of course, that symbol library is not only the drawing. Uh, many of those symbols here, they embedded or had some reaction to some data model or some ability to have different states. So uh, with that user interface, we can very quickly create, and you can even do things like if you copy page tags and you drop tags in your display, the system will create whatever symbol was predefined to that kind of data. So if you have a good data model, you can do very advanced user interfaces right away. Then finally, you need to deploy. And because I started as a trainee, as an engineering company, I had the experience to be on the field doing startups. <laughs> and because of those years of my early age, <laughs> every time we design a product, we put lots of effort to maintenance and deployment not only on the functionality. So we have specific features to deploy the application test modes where you have some built-in securities that you can run side by side the production and the testing environments on the same environment. We have very advanced features for a cross reference that shows not only where the tags being used, but as well, even the displays, everything on the system. Uh, we have built-in tools also to track what are changing in the project since the last time you did a version label or since the last time you sent that to your customers. And we have that built-in change management. So the concept here is the environment is created not only to deploy flexible applications, but we put a reasonable amount of effort uh, to uh, also uh, create the tools to allow you to deploy that properly. Okay, 
So I stopped sharing my screen a little bit so I can have a face to face <laughs> to see if there is any questions or someone would like to add something. Because Harry knows me, I can stay eight hours doing that <laughs> without coffee. So I'm holding I, myself here. I did have a quick question on the when you import the uh, UDTs from Alan Bradley, do they have the same uh -huh. functionality where you can browse down to, to every element automatically or uh, that automatically creates it in the same format? Yes, we can. We can pick up the LFFK file and we create the user data types from Rocco automatically. Okay. And by the way, there are some tools that can import data from Rocco or Sims, but they have a very a critical limitation. Most of the scale of real time packages on the past, even they look beautiful internally, is code created from 10, 20 years ago. And I know that very well because some of the comparisons are using even our own code. <laughs> uh, but uh, one of the limitations they have, you cannot have like in control logics that you have a user, the UGT, and inside that UGT, you have another UGT that has another UGT inside. So you have like a hierarchical data types. Right. If you try to import that with our fellow uh edge hmi from from schneider viva it will not do that because at that time 15 years ago <laughs> we allowed to create only one level of data type so one thing that we have imported because we have arrays multi-mention arrays arrays inside data types hierarchical data types not only can browse and import automatically any other data model as well we can create the same hierarchy in our products. And what we're releasing now that Harry mentioned is the next step. It's great to automatically import in the data with auto discovery. But what if you don't even have to import? You can do your screen writing uh, control logics one, the name of the PRC, dot the tag, and you address on the screen on the alarms directly the external data points without creating or mapping a local variable for us. <laughs> That's what we're doing now. We are already doing that with MQTT and Canary Labs right now. If you want to play a little bit with MQTT and Canary, you can do that right now. And very soon, we're going to uh, release that uni universal namespace modeling that you can do your application accessing directly those assets from those external data providers without having to do mapping or recreating a local variable. So it's a fully distributed uh, model to do it. Go beyond how, how to discover and import. You do the auto discovery and you use right away the addressing as it is on the external data source. Yeah, I had always been told that the UDT didn't exist in the control logics, that you built it entirely on your computer and it didn't exist. But I had a class out in Texas and someone showed me, they browsed into the controller and they said, Look, oh, yeah, here it is. It's here there. it is. Yeah. The problem, many of these uh, packages, the software packages, cannot really deal very well with that. <laughs> right. So in some sense, what did happen, it's very hard to create a platform from scratch. <laughs> uh, it takes many years. I can even give you the numbers. Uh, it takes two or three years to create the basic platform. Then take two or three years to deploy some reference accounts to mature. And then take two or three years to have some much recognition in some FJ places to be able to really have a product that has the full validation cycle. So it takes you six to nine years, depending on how quick you do each one of those three steps. So what does happen? Most of the major large manufacturers, the big five sisters that everyone know, I don't need to mention the five ones, they don't really create software from scratch. They keep using sometimes soft components they bought on their comps from five, 10, 20 years ago. And the problem, those systems, they were not really prepared to those concepts like distribute data. 
they're not really prepared to the concept of unified namespaces. <laughs> Uh, they are not really working well as data hubs mixing IT and OT data. And in some cases, not only consu uh, co consuming data on the fly from those external data sources. Those are concepts that 20 years ago, it wasn't in my dictionary and anywhere in the industry. And the only way to address properly that you cannot really pick up your nice, beautiful platform from 10, 15 years ago and add an auto-discovery module. It does right. not work that way. You need to do at the core level, at the kernel, you need to do a field design from scratch of a software platform to leverage those new technologies. Otherwise, you are only on the surface of what you can do. So I heard you use the term a unified namespace, which uh, I'm most familiar oh, yeah. with. Yeah, across from uh, from Walker Reynolds. Um, oh yeah. Was was this term in play before Walker started using unified namespace, or has he kind of coined that term? Well, I think it's possible uh, because uh, centralized namespaces or having unified data models, piece and parts of that are around in there. <laughs> But really put all two together and give the emphasis he does, I think he deserves the credit. And in fact, we have one of our YouTube videos that I did together with Walker that we talk about specifically about unifying spaces and how that new feature that you don't have to create tags anymore. <laughs> you just access the data. He got crazy with that. <laughs> A lot of existing applications uh, are already so scattered, right? That people people are going to have to rewrite the applications to pull everything together. Yeah. yeah. The number one challenge that we solved a few years ago as a software product was to be able to integrate, map, and import automatically all kind of data services. That's done. You can we can do that right now. What are now working is what you call the next phase. Okay. Let's use all that thing on the fly as needed, if possible, even without importing. <laughs> That's really what the phase we are now. I have a question, Frank, if you don't mind me jumping in. Sure. Uh, Marcos, I guess, first of all, thank you for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Um, I was wondering, what does... Um, what does training look like for Tatsoft? So if a systems integrator wants to get up to uh -huh. speed on the platform, I saw on the website, you mentioned, obviously there were in-person classes at one point in time, and there was a uh -huh. way to maybe migrate online. How could one join into these classes? Or if not, like what's the best way like moving forward to learn the platform? I think you have two paths here. The first one I, I would like to recommend since we are talking about Walker just a minute ago, He's creating a faculty studio university uh, in his tutorial platform. So he had already put a few uh, videos out. I perhaps told her you know exactly the number. <laughs> uh, but he's doing a full uh, that soft frameworks training uh, in his platform. And one thing I like his training, he's a very practical approach. Uh, not much on the product, explain the product, but, but from the point of view of the solution you want to accomplish. <laughs> so it's a very practical training. Uh, but sometimes it's so practical that we are doing some additional videos <laughs> that focus more on specific product features, okay? So the best training path I am recommending right now is to do first the Walker videos that he explains the product from the application point of view. Okay. But then to go deeper, you go to our videos that we go really more on the product configuration, and not much worrying on which solution are going to apply, but more product specific information. Okay. That's the Do you have the URL by any chance? Sorry for for Walker's uh, videos. I know he's Togar got. Can, can you grab that Togar and put on the chats? Yeah, uh, well, Walker, you are out. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Uh, if I can make uh, just to add into that, Mark. Uh, oh, yeah, the other please. thing, Vlad, the other thing we do is we are still a 
you know, on about a, every six week cycle, trying to do a um, online live training course, you know, kind of to replace our old in person type training courses. And that's um, usually it's uh, Philip, our guy, uh, Philip, if, if any of you guys have met him, um, we do not have one scheduled right now, but I would look for one within the next six weeks. So, and then uh, Mark had mentioned, and I mentioned a little bit is we're working on our uh, kind of product specific video stuff right now too. So we should have some of that out at least uh, by the end of next month. So within the next four to six weeks. So we'll have some, some better uh, online training. And then as well as we're going to continue to do our online live training. So awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. And you're able to um, uh, use the software for a couple hours, basically down oh, yeah, and, and run it. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good way to learn. Yep. It is. With full functionality, you can do access data from your devices. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think the only major feature is the hot sent by configuration. <laughs> <laughs> That's not on the demo, but most of the features are there. Yeah. And then also we have the systems integrator program too. So um, you can register as a systems integrator and get a not for resale full development license also. Um, or you can be a premium type uh, integrator and there we give additional training, additional licensing, that's that type of thing. A couple of uh, these addresses are showing up over here in the chat. Um, I never know uh, when I present these and record them on YouTube whether all that's gonna show up. I hope it does, if not. <laughs> If not, I can superimpose uh, graphics on here for that. I just may have to go dig yeah. things up again. Or, or we can add the comments on the YouTube video. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, great. So uh, I, I don't want to roll too much. <laughs> we are already one hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fly. So it's with you, Frank. Well, uh, I appreciate you guys showing up. I, you know, I had watched one of your um, I guess it, it may have been a LinkedIn live or it was on Walker's site. Uh, I, I watched mm -hmm. your uh, presentation before and I learned even more this time. And as I mentioned, uh, Harry and I had, had had a discussion with a plant owner uh, down in Miami that I work with a lot. And he's probably uh, planning on doing this. Of course, he's, he's now about to leave on a long RV trip, but uh, <laughs> chances are we're going to be implementing this. So, so I'll, uh, I'll be able to share some more experiences. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen again. Flip you back in here. One, two. There's a nice picture of Marcos. And then <laughs> I usually, <laughs> yes, I usually kind of finish up uh -huh. with a little, uh, a little blurb for our next webinar uh, on May 28th. It's another one of those. I'm actually having a live class, and this is something you guys may want to. Um, may want to uh, contact a company called Automation NTH, uh, Harry. Mm. Uh, yeah, Automation sure. NTH is a big integrator here in the Nashville area. And they use a lot of uh, some other unnamed uh, SCADA uh, platforms. But I mentioned to Jeff Buck, who is their VP of engineering, uh, I mentioned about Tatsoft and this webinar. I don't know if he attended uh, since I can't see everybody on here. But if not, uh, he'll go watch the YouTube video and they, uh, I do a lot of the training for them. So my next webinar, which is every two weeks, uh, I actually have their interns in here for a PLC uh, simulation class. What we do is we, we build PLC programs, simulate them and use some graphics and things. And, uh, uh, you know, they learn some of these other platforms and things and it'll just be a live class and say I had that class during this time. So I'm simply going to put a camera up and talk to all the students and that kind of thing. But uh, Jeff Buck, he's, he's actually been on one of these webinars. They showed a lot of what they do at Automation NTH, but they work with a lot of big customers, primarily uh, medical device, uh, pharmaceutical type customers, some automotive in the area. 
so they would be very interested in this too. And I'll okay. point out the, the, uh, the YouTube video to them. But thanks everybody for, for showing up. Um, definitely, I learned a lot. Any other final comments from anyone? Thank you. Uh, no, just thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Frank, uh, for having us and uh, look forward to um, future webinars that will uh, we'll take a look at what you guys are doing. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later.